All right, we're right in the middle of this concrete pour. Uh, MCM Construction, our prime contractor in Central Concrete and Supply, are managing up to 12 trucks on the bridge at one time so that the concrete keeps flowing throughout the entire pour. The Bay Bridge from Oakland to San Francisco is almost eight miles long. In our seismic retrofit of this job, there are several different structures that we've had to build in order to bring the entire project, the entire bridge, up to current seismic safety standards. Today we're going to look at our Yerba Buena Island transition. This is the part of the bridge where we take the new bridge that's been constructed with parallel traffic side by side and reorient that into a double deck configuration so that our traffic can go through the largest man-made bore tunnel on Earth, the Yerba Buena Island Tunnel. It's a challenge because we are now sitting in exactly the same footprint as the original Bay Bridge was constructed. Caltrans had to place this detour uh, back in 2009 that took traffic out of the way so that we could demolish the old approach from the Bay Bridge and put our new bridge in the exact same footprint. So that's one of the biggest things that we've had to do with the Bay Bridge. Keep traffic running, keep 280,000 vehicles moving while we put massive structures like this one in the exact same place as the old bridge used to be. Today in particular, we're doing an 1,100 cubic yard concrete pour. And as we're moving forward with this project, you can see how much progress we've made. Literally the upper deck above my head is going to be the new westbound transition, bringing traffic to the top part of the tunnel. And what I'm standing on here is where we're pouring concrete today. This is our eastbound approach heading toward what will be the world's largest self-anchored suspension bridge. One of the special things that we're doing today in this large concrete pour is we're putting our tining in, the grooving that's on the freeway that keeps your car on the structure. We're putting that in longitudinally, and what that means is we're cutting these grooves in along the same route that the tires go across the bridge. It brings the amount of freeway noise significantly lower. What seems like a recurring endless line of cement trucks deliver their loads to two pumping stations. The nearly $744,000 pour is going like clockwork until something goes wrong. The pump over here has broken down. Uh, uh, the main drive shaft broke and the problem with that is that everything on the pump works off that shaft. So MCM is going to bring another pump up on the bridge. In the meantime, this one can move a little bit to continue to service the pour. These portable boom pumps each cost more than a million dollars. They are only used on major jobs. There aren't a lot of them, and one has to be found immediately, or the poor could be endangered. So the danger here, when something like this occurs, is that you would run out of time and create a cold joint. A cold joint is where the already placed concrete starts to harden, and then fresh concrete is placed beside it. The broken unit is at the end of the pour, and the unit that is still working is now the furthest away. Its arms stretched as far as it can go, 190 feet. We're trying to keep the pour going, get under that boom and pour some more. Tom Brower is like an air traffic controller. He operates the boom by remote control. His years of experience are being tested. There is a mid-air traffic jam with little room to maneuver. Brower and his partner's faces are taut with concentration. Now come down with your B, leave your A up. This pump has articulated itself out as far as it can possibly be so that it can pour as much of the area while we're bringing the new pump in. Brower succeeds, and fortunately, as a contingency requirement, the contractor, MCM, is required to have extra equipment staged nearby on standby. That unit is in Oakland. If they need CHP, we should be able to arrange that. The Putzmeister 631, built in Wisconsin, owned by Associated Concrete Pumping, comes to the rescue. Oh, I am relieved, yeah, they, they worked their way through it, right? As the machine is frantically set up, the waiting concrete mix from each concrete truck is tested by Brandon Young. He's an inspector for Caltrans, and he's the one that's monitoring the concrete to make sure that, um, that we don't have to reject any of the batches. But with that little bit of a slowdown, we had to make sure that the concrete didn't set up. So a number of factors go into determining whether a mix is good. This one was fine because although the temperature is getting higher, there's still plenty of slump. 
there's an admixture into this that's actually keeping the temperature low so that it can make it through the entire pour and then set up as it was designed to. The samples are weighed, tested for the consistency of the concrete and its wetness. The samples of each truck are always saved for the record. We had to keep looking at the concrete because it had to sit for a little while while they, they did the replacement. And the test came out okay. What's in the drummer? Five hours later, trucks are still lining up, and the pour, now almost a football field in length, is nearly complete. The eastbound and westbound lane structures that will carry traffic starting Labor Day weekend 2013 are firm reality. The pour will cure for a week, and then we'll show you the next step in making it even stronger. These giant spools of steel cable will be used in post-tensioning of the concrete. That story to be continued. On the Yerba Buena transition structure, Mark Jones reporting.